in the last two weeks, IBM X Force has seen a 14,000% increase in spam related to COVID 19. Hey, welcome to Commando on Demand Insider, your fast-paced weekly update straight from Kim's desk to your ears. I'm Mike James, and in just a bit, Kim talks with Stephanie Carruthers. Stephanie is part of a team called IBM X-Force that looks for ways that people are trying to scam you. She's a white hat hacker, and with everything that's going on with the coronavirus, the spam and scams have increased exponentially. So Stephanie will tell us all about it and what's going on and how we can protect ourselves. By the way, this is not the nationally syndicated Kim Commando show on over 400 radio stations. The podcast version of that show is available at GetKim.com. And later on in this podcast, Kim's going to tell you how you can get into the Commando community and listen to the Commando show podcast for free for 90 days. Again, that's later on in this podcast. All right. Kim is going to talk to Stephanie Carruthers, sometimes known as Snow, in moments on Commando On Demand Insider. The coronavirus pandemic shocked our once booming economy. More than 6.6 million layoffs in the past couple of weeks alone have left a lot of Americans uncertain about the future and just desperate for financial assistance. And that's why the CARES Act was signed into law, which provides aid to affected businesses and workers. And then in addition to the expanded unemployment benefits, most Americans will qualify for a direct cash deposit from the federal government to ease this hardship to the tune of $1,200 per person. Now, if you're struggling right now, this cash payment should be coming your way to help you out very soon. But scams and bogus checks are beating the real thing to the punch. I mean, anytime a global event such as the coronavirus, COVID-19, happens, well, that's when the hackers, the cyber criminals, and the scammers, they just come out of the woodwork and they go to work. So whether it's phishing emails or new targeted scams, it's all meant to take advantage of you. And they want to get your uh, browsing history, your user IDs, your passwords, and all your other personal details. Now, joining us to tell us exactly what the hackers, the criminals, and the scammers are up to is a woman super smart who's simply known as Snow. She works for IBM X-Force, and they're a group of white hat hackers. They're the good guys because IBM X-Force has been seeing the surge of spam that's just capitalizing on people's fears and confusion during this time. So, Snow, thanks for being with us. What's the most surprising thing that you're seeing right now? We have seen tons of different campaigns. I think... A lot of people were expecting to kind of see maybe one thing around the virus, maybe something from the World Health Organization, which we're seeing a lot of. But because of all this fear and chaos, it brings out a lot of different campaigns. So we're seeing things from extortion campaigns, businesses that are hoping to get the government relief, you know, they're being targeted. We're seeing things, people that are using different types of video sharing platform being targeted. There's tons of different targets out there because of this pandemic. And since the birth of the internet, we've really never seen a disaster to this magnitude. That's true. And that alone, yeah, that alone makes all of the the spam around the COVID-19 really, really unique. And so give us some real examples. Like, I mean, I got one that said that I was uh, that I was eligible for a COVID nineteen test, and so I was just curious, so I clicked it, and of course they were trying to sell me a bogus test kit for forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents, and I thought, okay, who would be dumb enough to fall for this? But I bet you, because of the fear, like you mentioned, a lot of people would be. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually one of the the campaigns one of our our hospitals has told us that they're seeing. But instead of email form, they've seen it in the form of phone calls. So what someone was doing is they were spoofing their phone number to look like it was calling from the hospital. And they would call people saying, hey, if you would like to have a test, you just need to pay this piece the fee over the phone and show up at the ER and we'll test you. So unfortunately, this hospital was having all of these clients or all of these people come in saying, hey, we paid our fee. We want to get tested. But that's that's not how it worked. And unfortunately, that that was a scam that a lot of people fell for. Small business relief spam. What's going on with that? Yeah, so we've definitely seen a large campaign that 
that has gone out that pretends to be from the U.S. Small Business Association. And in that email, it says, you know, you, you've submitted and it's confirmation, but we also um, want you to download this so you can sign something and send it back in. And unfortunately, if someone were to download that, it does install some type of malware that then installs a remote access Trojan or rat. And rats are pretty scary because they can do a lot of different things. For example, they could be used like spyware, so they can be pretty much watching you on your computer. And whether that's watching what you're doing on your screen or turning your webcam on and watching you. And that's terrifying. You could it, yeah, it could also do things like it could download, alter, or delete files. So it might be downloading illegal content or do something like wipe your entire hard drive. So there's a lot of different things that rats could do. You know, you mentioned the webcam. Yes. And my son is a freshman at SMU in Dallas, which means that he's now taking online classes, right? Right. So he was telling me that there was a, a gal at SMU who was taking class via Zoom. And so she uh, decided that in the middle of class that she really needed to use the restroom. Oh, no. (laughs) So she took her laptop into the bathroom, put the laptop on the sink while she went to the bathroom so the whole class got to see her go potty. Oh, no. That's horrifying. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, she'll never do that again. (laughs) Nope. But getting back to the other effects of the coronavirus, uh, you have on your list that you sent over extortion. Yes. That's always very frightening. And we've always had the sextortions where, you know, you get an email that says, oh, you know, here was your password. And it probably was your password from a couple of years ago. Right. But uh, we saw you doing some na- naughty things while you were looking at some naughty website. And if you don't pay us $300 in Bitcoin or $800 in Bitcoin, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. is that we're going to send this to all your family members and friends. Is it about the same thing? Yeah. So, so related to COVID. Yes. So at, we've actually seen a campaign that's coming from someone who's um, a known spammer who specializes in extortion, but they've kind of changed their campaign a bit. So the extortion email that they're sending out right now is pretty much saying, I can infect you and your entire family if you do not pay, I think it's like $500 in Bitcoin to this address in 72 hours. And that is just, I mean, it's terrifying, right? And that's the kind of stuff that people are scared of. And a lot of times they'll comply and they'll do it because they have, you know, they have that need to want to protect their family, and they also have that timeline. So a lot of times when there's a timeline and urgency involved, that kind of, it makes people do things a lot faster than they normally would. Especially now, because we're all just so freaked out, right? Yes, I mean, absolutely. I mean, every time you turn on the news, it's like, well, should I wear a mask or not wear a mask? Okay. Uh, is it okay to go to the grocery store or is it not okay to go to the grocery store? Which now they say it's not okay to go to the grocery store or the pharmacy. And so we're all getting inundated with all these various data points and instructions. And then, and then you have what's happening on a local level. And so here in Arizona, uh, you know, there was a petition for the governor to close everything because for some reason he decided to uh, leave the golf courses open and uh, the nail salons and the hair salons Mm. as essential businesses. Even a massage parlor and a tattoo place was deemed essential until a couple of days ago. And so we also have local relief efforts. Are they going after those as well? Um, Yes, we've absolutely seen things with like the Small Business Administration with, um, you know, people receiving their checks from the government, anything like that. We're seeing tons of spam around. And if you really think about when with all this, you know, fear and uncertainty, whenever that's present, it's a perfect opportunity for criminals, especially with the COVID-19. It's just created this mass amount of opportunity for really any cyber criminal. And it's the perfect lure. Anything that's that's big in the news, they can they can use that. And this time is just it's incredibly effective because of all the fear and chaos. How much do you think? What do you think the percentage is that spam has increased related to COVID nineteen? Yeah, so at IBM 
Millennium X Force, um, we are a team of researchers, and we have a lot of people across the globe that monitor evolving threats all the time. And we have one team that's actually dedicated to analyzing all the spam that has been gathered specifically to COVID-19. And with that, we have found since February of this year, we've observed 4,300% increase of COVID or the coronavirus theme spam. So just in that short amount of time, 4,300% wow. increase, which is scary, but I have a scarier number for you. In the last two weeks, IBM X-Force has seen a 14,000% increase in spam related to COVID-19. 14,000%? Yes, just in the last two weeks. Wow. And so were we talking spam just to our email or are we getting text messages too and phone calls? Is everything in that or is that just email? That's just email, email related to COVID-19. Yep. Wow. That's just, that's a, that's a nightmare. So they must be making money at it, right? I would assume so. Yeah. If, if this, if this isn't stopping and I, I know we kind of mentioned before the world health organization, we're seeing a lot of spam impersonating them. Um, there have been a couple new variations of that spam that we've seen. One of them is asking for donations to help provide healthcare workers with the essential, um, you know, protective equipment that they need. Um, that's one of the scams. The other one is saying that there's a list of common household items that could help stop this virus. So different types of medications people can take, and it's conveniently loaded in a attachment. So if you were to download that attachment, some type of virus would then infect your computer. Hey, don't forget, if you have a question about something digital, you can get unbiased advice that you can trust only from America's Digital Pro Kim Commando. You just want to go to commando.com and in the upper right hand corner, there's a, a, a button called Be a Caller. Now you're going to click on that, give us a few details on your question, and then a producer will call and set you up with a call for Get Your Answer with Kim on the Kim Commando Show. All right, more of Kim's conversation with Stephanie Carruthers, including what can happen when somebody falls for these type of scams. Here on Commando on Demand Insider. So, so Stephanie, let's say that somebody falls for this, like they, they, and it executes that Remco's malware that installs the rat or the remote access Trojan. What do they do? So it depends on what they're looking for. Sometimes they want financial information, right? They want to see you log into your bank account so they could steal that information or buy something online and they have your credit card information. And then they can turn around and they could use it or, or sell that information on the dark web. They could also be looking for any types of sensitive information from um, your employer, right? If, if you're opening these kind of emails on the email from from who you work for, right, then they could have access to potentially sensitive information such as IP, um, CIF, different types of employees, things of that nature. Have you seen an increase in uh, voice phishing? I mean, I, I always refer back to that story about the guy in Germany who got a phone call from his quote unquote boss and actually spoke to his boss. And the boss said, hey, you know, we need to pay this bill right away. Send $250,000 to this vendor in Greece. And the guy said, well, you know what? It's my boss. I mean, he's not going to, you know, say no. So we sent two hundred fifty grand to some guy in, in Greece that was then sent to someplace in Asia. Uh, and then the so, so-called boss called the guy again a couple of days later and said, oh, you know, now we need another two fifty. And that was when the guy was like, hmm, this doesn't seem right. Have you seen an increase in that? So we have had a lot of our clients kind of tell us how, how this stuff's going. We don't actively monitor uh, voice calls like that. We, we monitor a lot of the phishing. But some of the stories we have heard from healthcare, specifically clients, was um, the business email compromise, right? Just kind of what you explained. So an email impersonating whether it's a, a CEO, a boss, a CFO, and asking for, you know, a wire of a, a normally a large amount to a specific account. However, 
these these scams have been going on for a long time, but because of all of the pandemic and all of, you know, everyone's just flustered right now, they're a lot more successful, especially for people in the healthcare industry, because they're just trying to get their job done, right? They're trying to save lives. They're, right. they're extremely busy. And so when things like this come up, a lot of times they don't take, you know, the extra steps and they don't slow down. So unfortunately, these scams are more successful right now. So what do we do? Do we just have to all just pay attention and then share this message with our family members and friends, and especially those who may be more vulnerable to responding to such a thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think getting the message across to friends and family can go a long way. I think the biggest thing is to slow down. And that's really hard right now, especially if, you know, the phone call or the email has fear and urgency in it. We want to act fast. But if we really take the time, slow down and evaluate the email or phone call or text message, a lot of times we can then start kind of picking it apart and seeing things that we wouldn't see before. Um, An example is what I like to call fraud speak. If you look through, you know, a lot of the scams right now that are going out, it will appear that English is a second language or they'll use words that don't make sense in the sentence. That's the big thing to catch on. Another thing is to always verify. Even if you receive an email from your boss or human resources or even a family member and there's an attachment or link and the message might not make sense, give them a call. It doesn't take long or send them an email somewhere, you know, on the side, don't reply, but send them an email directly and say, hey, and you know, I'm just checking in. Did you send this? I just wanted to be sure. That would probably stop a lot of attacks right there. And if you are receiving any type of scams from organizations like, you know, the Small Business Association or the World Health Organization, instead of clicking on any links or opening attachments, I would go to their website directly because a lot of times they have tons of good information posted even right on their home page and you can find the information you're most likely looking for there you know you are fabulous stephanie (laughs) you are um is there anything else that you'd like to add um no i think i think that's the biggest thing is there's just tons of scam going on right now and it might not even be necessarily you know towards COVID-19, but just we've seen so much different types of scam going on. So just really be vigilant as possible. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Hey, remember, you can keep up to date with the breaking news, security alerts, data breaches, and so much more. If you're into digital, this is the place to find the answers in the free Commando newsletters. Get yours at commando.com, which is K-O-M-A-N-D-O. And on the top, click on Get the Newsletters, double opt-in, so we'll send you a, an email that uh, makes sure that you want to join. And there you have it. And just ahead, Kim's closing thoughts next on Commando On Demand Insider. It's staggering when you think about it. IBM X-Force has observed a 4,300 increase in coronavirus-themed spam. And then they saw a 14,000 increase in spam related to COVID-19. So what can you do? Well, Stephanie gave a lot of great advice. Be smart. Don't fall for any scare tactics. And also double-check and request for personal details. If you get an email from your bank, for example, call them up. You can always Google search the offer in an email, and if it's a scam, it probably has been reported about somewhere on the web. And speaking of, the FBI runs the Internet Complaint Center. It's called ICC for short. You can let them know what you received, and then they'll investigate it too. We are going to get through this, but we have to do it together. So be safe, be strong, stay home. And don't forget, if you ever need a digital hand, you have me. You can use our message boards over at commando.com. If you have a tech question, happy to help you out. And you can actually use it free for 90 days just by heading over to getkim.com and be sure to use promo code Kim because that'll give you the 90 days at no charge because that's my way of giving back. You can also listen to the podcast for the Kim Commando radio show. Yes, that's my national radio show. You can find on 400 stations throughout the United States and in 177 different countries in every 
ship at sea. And again, that's over at getkim.com. Use promo code Kim to get your 90 days free. Really appreciate you joining us. And don't forget, if you ever need me, you got it. A special thanks to Stephanie Carruthers for joining us on Commander On Demand today. Stephanie is from a, a team called IBM X Force, and they look for ways to help people protect themselves from scams. Once again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, so you get these loaded to your device every single week. And we'll see you next time on Commando On Demand.